Hey guys, Dave again, welcome back to the channel. So in this one, we're gonna talk about all things rodeo. So for those that don't know, Wyoming state sport is rodeo. And we're getting ready to kick off rodeo season in a big, big way. So I wanna make sure that you're prepared. We're gonna talk about some terms that you need to know. And we're gonna talk about some rodeos that you should probably consider attending if you're coming to have a visit. So let's get into it. Let's talk about which rodeos to attend, when they are, why you should go to those, some smaller ones if you don't want to go to a big one and feel overwhelmed on your first trip. And then also I'll give you some tips on rodeos you can attend where it doesn't matter when you come to Wyoming. And then we'll run through top 10 terms that you should know when you go to the rodeo so you don't sound like a newbie. And I'll give you some pro tips along the way there too to work into. So let's get into our first rodeo and which one I think you should attend and that is the Cheyenne Frontier Days. So Frontier Days is far and away the biggest rodeo in Wyoming. And don't let this woman's angry face dissuade you. <laughs> it's, it's way more fun than, she's clearly having a bad day. I don't know who, who picked this photo, but uh, Frontier Days is great. It's really big. So they bring in a lot of top talent at Frontier Days as well. So think Blake Shelton, Chris Ledoux, back when he was alive, used to play here every year. So you'll get a really great concert in this one. It's a PRCA event, Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association, and all the terms that we reference in this one are gonna be PRCA terms. So know that this is a real deal event, like this counts and it matters. Great time, I think you guys should consider it. If you're gonna be in the area, my first recommendation for rodeo to attend is Cheyenne Frontier Days. Coming in at number two, if you're gonna go to an event, I think you should consider uh, Sheridan's Rodeo. So let me adjust this screen so that it looks a little bit better. So Sheridan's Rodeo is a really good time. And the reason I'm recommending it at number two, really, is, uh, it was right there. So looking at it, Indian Relay Races. So this stuff is just awesome. So, I mean, these guys ride these horses around and basically bail off at like 20 mile an hour. Some other dude has to scoop up this horse and stop it and hold on to it. Otherwise, the whole team's disqualified. This dude that we see here on the horse jumps off, jumps on another horse, and then gets going again. I mean, it gets to be a real circus. It's pretty, pretty fun. I definitely recommend if you can make this rodeo and attend this event, you should definitely check it out. There was a reason the show Yellowstone referenced this in the show. Very cool, very worth checking out. So Sheridan, definitely, uh, if not number two, number one, as far as rodeos to attend, and this Indian Relay Races is, is a big, big reason to do that. So at number three, here in our uh, hometown is the Cody Extreme Bulls. So this one's only a, this is a one day event. Now the Cody Night Rodeo is sort of called the rodeo capital of the world, which you see up here. And the reason for that is, so the night rodeo runs from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Every day they have rodeo. So anytime you roll into Cody, during that time frame, basically in the summer, you can go to rodeo and see rodeo. Cool. But Extreme Bulls is really the event you wanna target. Looks like this year it's June 30th. So they bring in top 10 bulls, top 10 bull riders. They come in for a mega prize. It's a good time. It's definitely worth checking out. Go in, get you a buckskin. What's a buckskin? Uh, this a buckskin. So horse banquet beer. Uh, they call that a buckskin. You can see it. It's based on the color. So if you go up to the uh, beer booth there, hey, can I get a buckskin? If you come into the Proud Cut, uh, the restaurant I own, come in, ask for a buckskin. They'll hook you up. They'll get you going. So get you a buckskin, sit around, watch the rodeo. It's a good time. It, you, you, won't, you won't have a bad time. If going to a major rodeo and things like that aren't really your cup of tea, there's a couple smaller ones that, that are happen in the state. I mean, rodeos just all the time. So Lander has an old timers rodeo, 4th of July weekend. If you're in the area, it's a nice time. Lander's a cool little town to check out. I'm going to do a thing later on Sinks Canyon. 
But you can go to Lander, have a great time, check out the rodeo if, if you can't make one of these other big rodeos work out. Also, and this one, I couldn't find a real website for the Clark Rodeo. Uh, Clark is in uh, a remote stretch of Wyoming right up there near the Montana line. But if you go to these smaller rodeos, you get some of these fun events, and that's why I wanted to highlight this one. So this photo is, photo is actually from the Clark Rodeo. So you get some fun stuff where you get kids like riding sheep bareback and <laughs> doing some crazy nonsense like this. You know, so it's it's takeoffs and it's trades. Basically, do you want to go to a big rodeo, see the professionals and all that kind of stuff? Or are you more into this kind of thing? So I wanted to give you guys some options as far as which way you might want to go with this because you've got a lot of options in Wyoming if you're coming to visit or if you just moved here. I encourage you to check them all out. But top of the list for me is going to be Sheridan. Go see the Indian Relay Races, catch a PRCA event, and uh, just have a good all-around time. It's a uh, good, clean, family fun do not be the tourist, though, that's drunk and gets on the bull. There's always a bull in front of these rodeos where you can sit there and take a picture. And every year we watch a Turan get on the bull drunk, and the dude's like, I'm a cowboy, and then promptly falls off onto the ground. Don't be that guy. Okay? <laughs> You're drunk. Just don't get on. But, uh, yeah, do get you a buckskin, though, and do enjoy. So let's get into some terms that you need to know for attending your first rodeo. First terms going to be header and healer sort of combined, heading and healing. You heard about it in Yellowstone too. I'll play this clip for you. So basically, the header is the first guy to rope. So that guy throws the rope first. He's aiming for the horns. So he's trying to get the head uh, tied up and pulled up. That'll slow the slow the cow down. And then the healer comes around. Healer, H-E-E-L-E-R, healer. Trying to rope up the feet, pull it tight. And then that's when the clock will stop. And that's when they score. So header and healer. Header ropes first, he goes for the head. Healer ropes second, he goes for the feet. Next, the box. So what's the box? So the box is the area where the horse rider, the horse and the rider will back into. So it's right next to where whatever animal that they're chasing down comes out. So that box is an area set up designated for them wait to go until they hear the horn. So that's the box. Breaking the barrier. So the barrier is the line right at the front of the box where the uh, horse and the rider we just talked about sort of break out of. So that starts once they go, but they can't go until the animal, let's say it's a steer in this case. So the steer has to break out and they have to wait a set amount of time so that the steer has the opportunity to get out in front. The animal always gets a head start whenever you're leaving from the box. So if you break the barrier early, it's a 10 second penalty for leaving too early. So you'll see that a lot. You'll see it once or twice at every rodeo. It always happens. It's a common occurrence. So you know that they broke the barrier early. You see the 10-second penalty. Number three, bulldogging. You're like, what is this ombre saying? So bulldogging is just another term for steer wrestling. So this is steer wrestling. Super fun event. And understand, when you go to rodeo, you're not going to see every event every time. Rodeo is not always the same. There'll be different events. And they happen in different order and different ways. So there's some flexibility to it. So that's why I'm jumping around on terms and giving you some different ones. But bulldogging is just basically steer wrestling. It's just another term. So if you want to sound cool, be like, I'll take a buckskin and I'm here to see the bulldog. All right. So next up is shoot. So shoot is this metal structure here. It's where, you know, the bull riders get on and get settled in. They keep the bull or the bronc, whatever it is that they're riding, the big, large animal sort of corralled so that the rider has time to get in and get all strapped in before he gives the, and this is just a pro extra tip, the cowboy nod, which goes to the judges and starts the clock and releases him. But that's, and pro tip here, when you go the rodeo, so we'll use the Cody Knight rodeo, for example. So when you go into the Cody Knight rodeo, there's grandstands right in front of you. Then there's arena and then there's another set of grandstands. And on that far side of grandstands are the chutes. So for me, what I like to do is I bypass the first set of grandstands and I go around and then I come in and I get down as close to those chutes as I can. So like if this is the chute here, I like to sit just over the chute, kind of as close as I can and still enough to see out. So there's a sweet spot in there that you want to get into. 
But what that allows you to do is you can see all the stuff that the rider's doing and all the little finagling and the positioning and all that stuff. You can also see if, and God forbid, we don't ever wish this to happen, but it's sort of like watching NASCAR. You kind of go for the wrecks. So if a bull loses its mind or a bronc loses its mind and things get tossed and all that kind of stuff around, you have a really great vantage point down in on it. And then the other thing you get is when the chute opens and they go out, all the action usually occurs right there within a small, you know, a small window and a small area. So you can look right down in and see all of that occurring. You're not looking out across the arena and trying to interpret it coming back and forth. So you get the whole picture. So for me, sitting over the chute is the spot that you want to be in. So you go pro tip, try to wiggle in and get in there. Um, Otherwise, get up high, and you can kind of see down, but it's kind of far. So I like to sit right in the action, be right there, and you get to learn a lot and see a lot. So sit above the chute, and the chute is the metal structure that holds the end. Okay, so next is the clover leaf pattern. So if you go and you're watching barrel racing, so they set three barrels out. They run in a clover leaf pattern is how they track it out. So I don't think you'll hear a lot of people mention that. I just thought it was cool to know that there's actually a term for the pattern itself, and it is called the cloverleaf. So barrel racing, cloverleaf. So next up, we're going to talk about the draw. So the draw, basically, if you're riding a bull, it actually happens a couple days ahead of time at the PRCA headquarters. So they'll do the draw and assign you to the bull. If you're doing something smaller, like let's say you're doing something with timed events, so the calf or the steer there, the selection will occur on site, usually right before the event or not too far there beyond. So if you're riding a bull, it happens at the PRCA uh, headquarters. They make that decision. They do that assignment for you. And if you're doing a timed event, that's usually local right there on site is where that decision gets made. So well, that was a cool little distinction. So that's how you know that draws work. Next up, we got flank strap. So this is a flank strap. So it's a soft sheepskin strap that goes around the animal and what it does is it encourages the animal to jump rather than kind of buck up so it makes for a way more exciting rodeo it also makes it a little bit safer so i didn't know there was actually a term for it i just assumed it was a strap but it's called a flank strap and it's specifically made out of soft sheepskin so there you go drop some knowledge bombs on the people hey did you know that that flank strap there is made out of soft skin Pardon me while I take a sip of my buckskin. So there you go. You can sound like a knowledgeable rodeo person. And then let's see. Next up, we got freehand. <clears throat> so when you look at a bronc rider or a bull rider, the hand that is in the air, so this one's sort of cinched down to the flank strap. This one's in the air. That hand cannot touch the animal. So if this is the animal, it cannot touch the animal or make any contact or whatever. The rider will be disqualified. That hand needs to remain free. Preferably in the up, like, I mean, you'll see it get out, but it just cannot touch the animal in any form or fashion. It's got to stay up and it's got to stay high. So that's the free hand. And then the last one that I'm going to give you are the pickup men. So the pickup men are the two guys on horses. You'll see them all the time. They're the guys that ride out, help the bronc riders or the bull riders get off without getting pummeled or, or run over. They'll also herd up the animal and get it to the gate, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so they so they do a lot of good work. They they help out a lot, but those are called pickup men. So if you hear that term, you know what it is. All right, so we ran through a bunch of that really quick. Hopefully that guy's helped you out with rodeo and rodeo terms. And now you guys are familiar with what's going on. At least you could get in and understand a little bit. You're not going to be like, what did this hombre say? What are you talking about, partner? Like, so this way, like, you know, some terms. You know some stuff to talk about when you get there. I tried to keep it super high level. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. No, I did not cover every rodeo that is in Wyoming. There are way too many. This video would have been two hours long. So we talked about a couple big ones. Hopefully you guys get out and check one of those out. I think you'll have a great time. Like I said, those Indian relay races are something really, really cool to see. Um, have a good time. Get out there. Enjoy. Don't be the drunk guy falling off the bull. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one.